Hello friends. Hi, this is Dr. Felix Gill. I want to talk to you today about a fascinating illness called schizophrenia. This illness uh, has been around, uh, I think, ever since mankind uh, uh, became conscious. There have been altered states of consciousness that uh, have mystified uh, human beings. The fact is that uh, schizophrenia, as we know it, uh, is an illness, it's a uh, syndrome that comprises several illnesses, actually. Uh, it is on a spectrum. The basic uh, problem in schizophrenia uh, is uh, it's multidimensional. There's uh, problems in thoughts, in how uh, emotions and uh, the outside environment is perceived and how thoughts are processed and the output that occurs uh, in response to uh, the perception of the world. These are all uh, kind of off base and uh, this gives rise to this syndrome that we uh, label uh, to be schizophrenia. <clears throat> there used to be um, different subclassifications of uh, schizophrenia uh, there you had paranoid, undifferentiated, catatonic, um, simple schizophrenia, undifferentiated schizophrenia. So there were ways that uh, uh, schizophrenia was classified in the past and is different now in the DSM-5. It's uh, perhaps more accurate uh, to describe um, schizophrenia as a global uh, illness uh, that covers a range of symptoms. Uh, and not to be uh, get boxed in too much by the diagnostic uh, nomenclature. Uh, the way it's defined in DSM-5 is that you have to have had symptoms of uh, uh, the illness, positive or negative symptoms, for about a month or less if treated. The, the positive symptoms uh, are symptoms that you can see, and the negative symptoms are, are symptoms that are not so obvious. Negative symptoms would be things like social withdrawal, you know, it could be due to a number of things. Lack of expression, that could be due to a number of things. Lack of drive, again, you know, it's very vague. Uh, the positive symptoms are things that uh, are evident, and uh, these include uh, symptoms such as hallucinations, overt delusions that are expressed, uh, disorganization of thought with, and disorganization of thought in which you cannot follow the logic of the person um, that is uh, talking to you. So that last symptom is called loosening of associations. Um, so these are some positive symptoms. If these symptoms are present for about a month or less if treated and if they've caused significant dysfunction and if this persists for a period of six months or more it's uh, classified as uh, schizophrenia. Uh, the onset of schizophrenia can occur in the late teens to early 30s. Usually between age 18 to 25 is when the first uh, episode might occur. There may be pre symptoms uh, with negative symptoms such as withdrawal. They may uh, behave in a, a kind of paranoid or seclusive manner and then the person may begin to hallucinate, may have more paranoid ideations, paranoid delusions, and may become agitated because of their paranoia or their sense of imminent persecution. And uh, this may result in their coming to the hospital or the emergency room. So um, once they're in the, uh, in the hospital, once they come for help, uh, what are the steps that should be taken, undertaken? You should calm them, uh, offer them assurance, talk to them in a calm and a reassuring manner, supportive manner. Let them know that this is an illness that's well understood, that, that there are medications that can help their symptoms. Uh, be kind, caring, and supportive. Do, um, uh, you know, do a physical exam or have it done. Uh, if it's a first episode uh, psychosis, uh, some recommend that you should get an MRI. Uh, and it's probably not a bad idea. Um, and then once you, you know, rule out medical causes, uh, then you can go on to the treatment. 
to rule out these medical causes, it's important to also get some blood work done, get a CBC, uh, CMP. CBC is complete blood count. CMP is comprehensive metabolic panel. This one measures electrolyte, glucose, um, uh, some liver enzymes, kidney function. So get that. Uh, once you have ruled out the medical causes uh, and you ruled out, you get a drug screen also, you rule out any effect of any street drugs or intoxicant drugs. Then you can uh, talk to them about, uh, you know, the treatment options. Uh, again, um, you know, family is very important. Uh, try to include them in the treatment planning. And you can also get collateral history to uh, you know, uh, substantiate your impressions or uh, diagnostic impressions or ideas. So, the treatment is also multi-pronged. Um, of course, you you know provide them a safety, a safe environment. Then you can offer them treatment with uh, antipsychotic medications. These uh, there are several. There are more. There's more than one category of antipsychotic medications. Uh, the older antipsychotics are very effective. Uh, these are called the typical antipsychotics. This includes medications such as Haldol, Prolixin, Navin, uh, Porphenazine, or Trilophon. And uh, all the older antipsychotics, these are potent D2 dopamine blockers. And uh, they do work. Uh, Haldol and Prolixin have long-acting injections also available, so if they get stabilized on this, uh, then you can give them once a month uh, uh, medication dose by injection, and then they don't have to worry about compliance issues or forgetting the, to take their medication. So um, you can start treatment with a typical antipsychotic, as I mentioned. The benefits of this is that it is effective, and um, um, it is not likely to cause any weight gain uh, or what they call the metabolic syndrome. The metabolic, uh, the metabolic syndrome is a big uh, problem with the newer atypical antipsychotics. So what are these atypical antipsychotics? Uh, these, are thing, these are medications such as olanzapine, risperidone, Seroquel, Cariprazine, or, or Braylar, B-R-A-Y-L-A-R. Then there are others also, um, such as uh, Geodon, Abilify. These atypical antipsychotics also work. The most potent D2 blocker and the most effective one for positive symptoms appears to be Risperidone. It's a very high affinity for the dopamine receptor. It blocks them and does control the positive symptoms. Olanzapine is also effective. Olanzapine, along with its cousin Clozapine, they're both very effective for uh, schizoaffective disorder as well. So uh, uh, the other ones, uh, sometimes you can um, combine them with a, uh, a strong dopamine blocker like do uh, ris Risperdal or Haldol, a low dose, and then you can add, uh, use Braylar or one of the other ones like uh, Aripiprazole or Aripiprazole or Vilify or one of the, or even Seroquel. So you, there is a rationale for combining antipsychotic medication because they target different uh, receptor systems and schizophrenia is a global illness that is affected by various uh, uh, pathophysiological uh, phenomena. Speaking of which, uh, the dopamine receptor theory has been around and there's some credence to it. You give them dopamine blockers, they get better. You give people dopamine stimulators, they get psychotic. So there's a definite dopamine access or fulcrum uh, around which the illness does get affected. Uh, NMDA glutamate receptors also seem to have a role when they're hypofunctioning or when you give medication that block the NMDA glutamate receptors. Like uh, if you give them fencyclidine, which is angel dust, PCP, or uh, ketamine, which is another psychotogenic medication, uh, they will have psychotic symptoms. So glutamate receptors also do have a role. So the pathophysiology is more complex than we uh, had believed it to be. Uh, the psychosocial factors are also important. Uh, it is a strongly uh, biological illness. 
if you have a first degree relative, your risk is 6.5%. In the general population, it's around 1% risk for having this illness. But if you have a first degree relative, the risk rises to 6.5%. If you have a twin, uh, the risk is about 40% that you might get it. Uh, so it's not 100% even in identical twins. So that tells you that uh, environment does play a factor. Speak of, speaking of environmental factors, uh, early childhood uh, adverse experiences such as physical abuse, a loss of a parent, uh, poverty, living in a suburban setting, uh, in a high crime, crime neighborhood, living in a family where there is a lot of criticism and overt display of negativity and hostility towards one another also increases the risk for this illness getting precipitated in the early adulthood of the person that has these, this uh, tendency for it. So if there's an adverse uh, psychosocial environment, it definitely accentuates and increases the risk for the illness uh, manifesting itself and uh, being more difficult to treat. So you can start treatment with the uh, antipsychotic medications. Any of them will do. Um, like I mentioned, Risperdal, Olanzapine, Haldol, Polixin, Navin. Uh, these are effective medications for treating them. Uh, the literature says that the others work also. You should try to rehabilitate them from a psychosocial perspective also. You can teach them coping skills to deal with adverse uh, situations that cause them to be angry. You can teach them money management skills. You can teach them how to get along in society. You can teach occupational skills as well. And, uh, um, you know, put them in a supportive care setting, uh, perhaps a group home in the beginning. And they can function well. Some patients with schizophrenia um, uh, can uh, actually function in a normal job. So um, it's not, um, uh, the fact that somebody has schizophrenia should not put a limit on uh, what they are able to achieve. Uh, with our modern medication, uh, supportive care and treatment, and understanding uh, treatment team, uh, the person can go very far in terms of their rehabilitation and recovery. <laughs> anyway, those are some ideas that uh, uh, might be useful for you to have. So, Key takeaways are that it's a global illness, it has a defined pattern and a course. Uh, it can be improved, the outcome can be improved with medications, the older uh, typical antipsychotics and the newer antipsychotics, the typical one, psychosocial interventions can help. And for the resistant cases, clozapine uh, is a wonderful medication that also has a uh, very good response rate in those that are refractory. Schizophrenia is fascinating and uh, it should humble us because uh, it has, uh, uh, it's affiliated with uh, some of the most brilliant minds as well. Uh, John Nash in the Beautiful Mind movie had schizophrenia, his son had schizophrenia. Albert Einstein, the brilliant scientist who changed the world, uh, had uh, um, somewhat, uh, you know, uh, some thinking along those lines, this pattern of thinking was very abstruse, but he held it together and he was a genius. Uh, his son, however, was also a scientist, but did suffer from schizophrenia. And John Nash's son, as I mentioned, also was uh, afflicted with schizophrenia. So this illness is, uh, uh, comes with some gifts also. So the phrase, um, you know, genius is akin to madness, may yeah, have come from this. Because uh, certain families where this uh, occurs uh, can be very gifted intellectually sometimes. All right, that's, uh, uh, that's a little bit about schizophrenia. Take care, and uh, I'll see you at the next uh, video. Take care, bye.